Well, turning out of Georgia, where a federal judge is set to hear arguments today from former Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark. Clark is one of 19 defendants in the Georgia election interference case. He's accused of taking part in a scheme involving former President Trump to try and overturn the 2020 election. Clark is seeking to move his case from state to federal court. All 19 defendants in that case have pleaded not guilty. Last week, one of Clark's co-defendants, Georgia State Senator Sean Still, learned he won't be suspended from office following his indictment. A review panel appointed by Georgia Governor Brian Kemp said it did not believe the indictment would affect his ability to carry out his duties as a public official. MSNBC anchor Katie Fang and NBC News legal analyst Danny Savalos join us now on this. Hey, Katie, we'll get started with you. So what are we expecting Clark's attorneys to argue here in this request for removal? Well, not only are we expecting to hear from Clark's attorneys today to answer your question that they're going to say that Jeffrey Clark was acting as a federal official when he did all of the conduct that's been alleged to be relating to him in that indictment that's being brought by D.A. Fonnie Willis. But Clark has the burden. It is his burden to be able to convince Judge Jones here in federal court that not only was he a federal officer, but that all of the acts that he undertook to be able to overturn the election results in 2020 were related to his job. The problem is the state of Georgia has filed a stinging response in opposition. You expect to see a equally as stinging cross-examination today in court wherein they ask him, Mr. Clark, how is it possible that the actions you took as a member of the DOJ were actually a part of your job when you were told specifically by the Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen at the time that we have nothing to do with elections in the states. It's outside of your job. And so we're expecting to hear those arguments. And the biggest question is, will Jeffrey Clark take the stand as Mark Meadows did last week? Mm. So, Danny, this is a question we've asked numerous times over the last couple of weeks. Why try and move it to federal court? What would be the advantages of that? The advantages are massive. And while this removal bid is on the ropes, don't count it out yet. It's possible this case could still end up in federal court. And here are the two main advantages. Number one, you expand the geographic area of the jury pool. Now, that takes you to counties that are a mixed bag for Trump but uh, and his def co-defendants. But on the whole, anything that expands you outside of Fulton County, if you're a defendant in this case, is good for the defendants. All you need to do is look at the election results from the most recent election to give you an idea of which direction voters went in those counties, in Fulton County and then the counties outside. Secondly, and I think this was on display last week when they, there was a televised hearing in Georgia in Fulton County Court, the strategic advantage is you take prosecutors out of the courthouse where they are every single day, where they're comfortable, and you put them in an alien environment, which is federal court, with different rules of procedure. Now, you may say, what's the big deal? They're still prosecuting the same Georgia laws, but I think that kind of home court advantage is critical. It's no surprise that virtually every DA their office is located either in the courthouse or directly across the street. And I think the Georgia, the Fulton County prosecutors are located right across the street from the courthouse. This is where they are every day. You notice, I'll give you an example. Last week, there was a uh, complaint by the defense counsel that, hey, we filed these motions, we wrote them out. The prosecutors didn't even file anything in writing. They just showed up and made oral argument. Well, that's the way it is in, in that courthouse. You take them out, put them into a federal courtroom, mm -hmm. that may not fly, and that could make the difference. Mm -mm. Katie, let's bring you back in here. So Judge Steve Jones, who's hearing today's arguments, as we were referencing, rejected Mark Meadows' attempt for removal earlier this month. Meadows requested an expedited appeal. So tell us the latest on that front. Yeah, so actually today is the deadline, September 18th, for Mark Meadows to file his initial brief to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, trying to convince them that Judge Jones made a mistake when he ruled against Meadows and allowing him not to take his case from state court to federal court. A week later, on September 25th, the state of Georgia has to file its response to what Mark Meadows files. And then just a few days later, Mark Meadows has to file his reply brief. To Danny's point, there's a lot of legal filings that happen in federal court, but we're interested to see who are the three judges that are in the 11th Circuit that are going to actually hear this appeal. It definitely sometimes lends itself to some insight in terms of where they might be leaning. Mm. But at this point, an expedited appeal is good news for Mark Meadows, but also good news for Fonnie Willis, because if he loses at the 11th Circuit and the Supreme Court doesn't take up the issue, Mark Meadows is squarely back in state court. Mm. Danny, real quickly, let's talk about the federal election interference case. We know Special Counsel Jack Smith wants this narrow gag order on former President Trump. Why is that? What's he looking for here? 
Some of the events in these cases have been surprises. This is not one of them. Mm. Everybody knew this was coming sooner or later, that Donald Trump would push the limits of extrajudicial statements, and that sooner or later, the government would make a motion to restrict what he says. And so the government is trying to make what appears to be a reasonable request that, look, we have the First Amendment. The president should be able to talk about this. This is arguably a lot of political speech. So then the government's asking the court to enter a narrowly tailored order that would really just restrict his comments about the judge, about witnesses, about specific people in the case. Donald Trump is different than any other criminal defendant in American history. There is nobody else who can take to his, uh, his phone and change the, uh, change the minds or influence the minds of an entire nation, arguably the entire world. Special conditions require special measures. This is probably one of those moments. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.